judgmental. See, you're judgmental. I didn't deny him nothing. If I don't have the money right away to get that blood transfusion, what am I supposed to do? I did what the vet told me to do. Feed him beef liver, give him nutrients, leafy green vegetables, build up his iron, iron supplements, build up his hemoglobin so that he can build up his blood count to buy me some time so I could save some money to get the transfusion. I took a loan out on my 401k to get this transfusion for him. It takes time. It's not like it just gets direct deposit in my checking account. So before you fix your lips to judge some What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? What's happening? Hello? What's hey, happening? What's, what's going on? What's good? Nothing. You, man. Nothing you, nice. man. You, man. So uh, we're bringing it back. 360. 360 degrees. Lots been yeah. going. Lot, lots been going on with you as of uh as of late. As of late, man, what's kinda? <laughs> uh, without getting into too much detail, man. Dial face trucker in the building. <laughs> without getting into too much detail, man. Uh, first off, sorry for your losses. Um. Thank I know I, I I know it's a it's a wow moment. Uh the the, the first dog uh passed away. You you go and get another dog or a puppy in a replace only to kind of, only to come to find out that he didn't have that much time left, you know, here on this earth either. Uh when you went yeah. to go when you went to go and pick up the the puppy did you did did the rescue place kind of let it you know about his health conditions yeah well whenever you get a puppy from a rescue they usually give the puppy their first set of shots mm -hmm. and deworming mm -hmm. so she was doing all of that and she did all of that when i picked him up um but the thing with the rescues, too, is you don't know the history of the puppy. Right. What happened before they got to the rescue. Um, and you can't diagnose anything unless they start showing symptoms of something. So she was deworming him, and she, you know, like, I'm going to deworm him until there's no more worms left in his poop. Mm -hmm. By the time I got him, he didn't have any worms left in his poop. Okay. Well, not the ones that you could see physically. The ones you can't see physically, he probably he had. But um, the vet didn't test it because it didn't look, his poop didn't look like it was anything wrong with it. Right. Now, in hindsight, comparing it to what I saw, the diarrhea versus the, the really, um, like the regular poop, it was the same color and everything. Everything was the same except the texture. So in hindsight, I'm thinking like, yeah, he had it back. He had it then, but nobody knew that. Well, we wouldn't you, have thought to test it until there's a problem. Well, you know, animals don't tend to. Us humans can't can't tell whether an animal is is sick or not. The only way you can honestly tell is by their you know bodily functions. Um. Yeah. So when you found out, uh, when you found out it was something wrong with him. You you took them to a number of vets, uh, in particularly two of them. The first vet, I took what, him to the vet in Houston. That was the vet that that's his vet, like where I live. Okay, I took him there first. Okay, they gave him a dewormer and antibiotics and tested his stool, and that got all the information that I needed. And then we started treating that. Okay, and then the second vet I took him to because he wasn't getting better didn't seem like he was getting better. I mm -hmm. so took him to an animal hospital, um, ER, animal ER. And um, they said that the medicine that his vet gave him, he needs more medicine. He, he needs a little bit something stronger and a little bit longer. So I took him back to his vet, and the vet was like, okay, yeah, let's give him this, this, and that. So we gave him that, and they were saying that he needed a blood transfusion. But... Mm. Because the he had hookworm, 
and hookworm attaches to the lining of your your stomach and, and GI tract and sucks your blood. So they were saying that he needs a, a you know, a, um, a blood transfusion because he's anemic and sucking all his blood. He has no red blood cells, basically. Hmm. And you okay? So, but we couldn't all do this, it. All, all of this is happening after you got the dog from the rescue. Yeah. Because when I first got him from the rescue, he was healthy and playing and playful, and his poop was solid, like solid, regular poop like everybody does, right? Um, I got him on the 17th, but by the 25th, by the 20th, so this is how it happened. I got him on the 17th. I went home on the 20th. Okay. I already know, like, when you get a new puppy and you change environments, they're going to have some gastrointestinal problems because that's what puppies do. They usually have diarrhea if you bring them home to a new home or whatever. So I'm expecting him to have diarrhea um, the first and second day of, of me being home, which was the 21st and the 22nd. On the 23rd, I had to go downstairs. I had him upstairs in my room with me. But on the 23rd, I had to go downstairs and get ready to start cooking. So I brought him downstairs in a little secured area. So I'm thinking, okay, this changed too because he's used to now my room, but now he got to get used to downstairs. That's going to be a whole other issue for his stomach or whatever. So I expected diarrhea. But then on the 24th, he started throwing up. And he had diarrhea and coughing. So I'm like, what the hell? Let me take him to the vet. So I took him on that Friday. Okay. Right. I took him that Friday because diarrhea, okay, cool. But he, he threw up three times in a row. Then he had a cough with it. So to me, I'm thinking, oh, he has kennel cough. That's expected when you get a puppy from the rescue. So let me take him to the vet. No problem. We'll get it fixed. He, and then at the vet, he threw up and had diarrhea, and it was clear. It looked like bile. He, he, his diarrhea looked like bile, and his throat was clear, but it had, like, like little squiggly things in it. And I'm thinking, that must be worm. So maybe the dewormer is working, right? The dewormer that she gave him before I got him is working. They're dying. He's throwing them, pooping them out, throwing them up and pooping them out. So I'm like, this is a good sign. So he gave me all the medication, and the doctor thought it was a good sign, too. But then on the 28th, he wasn't getting better when I was expecting him to get better. So that's when I took him to the pet hospital just to see if he's going to be okay for me to take him to the vet because I was supposed to start my clock on at midnight on the 28th. And the doctor didn't open until 7. So I'm like, he doesn't look well. I don't know what's going to happen with him. And I'm paranoid because of bear. So I'm like, I want to make sure he's going to survive until 7 a.m. Doctor's like, yeah, he's going to survive until 7 a.m., but he is anemic because of the hookworms. So took him back to the vet, gave him some more medication and another dewormer, sent me on my way. But then on the 1st, he steadily is declining. On the first, on December 1st, he's steadily getting worse and worse and worse. This time now he's breathing weird. So I take him to another animal hospital. This was in South Dakota. And um, they tested his stool. They tested him for parvo. They said he still has hookworms. The hookworms never died, or if they died, he was just so compacted with hookworms that, you know, he just, the, the medicine is just not working or whatever the case may be. So they gave me more medicine more medicine and then by the the third the night of the third he was critical like even worse so that's when i took him to the animal hospital um in do do some two land north dakota uh, south dakota that's uh and, and no that's two city he, south dakota and that's when that's when he aspired that's way that next morning yeah wow she said the doctor there at the um at the hospital said that he had so many hookworms. Probably, well, she was assuming because she was going to do X-rays on him, but he passed away before they could do the X-rays to find out what's going on inside his body. So she assumed that since he still is testing positive for hookworms, he probably had so many hookworms in his body that it went to his lungs and his heart. And then it, so many hookworms are going to make you so anemic because it's sucking all your blood. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the blood transfusion that he did get, it helped a little bit, but it didn't really help at all because he still had the hookworms. You got to get rid of that in order to do the blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. Then she said that there's hookworms and whipworms out there right now. She just got the article about it that are resistant to all of the dewormers that anybody gives. Every single one of them on the market. He could have had that hookworm. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, nothing could have, would have helped him. Um, at first, I'm thinking, I got to get him a blood transfusion, but I don't have the money. But then I'm thinking, in hindsight, well, can't get him the blood transfusion until the hookworms are dead. If the hookworms never die, then why would I waste money on blood transfusion? And so, at the end of the day, there's nothing that could have been done for him. It was just, we need, his body, he was too small, he couldn't, couldn't take it, he if he was a little bit bigger, a little bit more stronger, then maybe the medications would have had a chance to kill the hookworms. He probably would have been able to, you know, survive a little bit longer to get the, the blood transfusion and make, let it work. But he was just too small and weak for anything to happen. He was So he had these hookworms before she even got him from the animal shelter. He had these hookworms probably from birth because from, you get passed from the mom to the baby. And nobody knew. So by the time I got him, which was when he was eight weeks old, he had hookworms for eight weeks. They was already sucking his blood. They was already killing him. Nobody knew that. Wow, Dow. I I, I am so sorry uh, to hear this uh, tragic story of of your little pup, man. Especially coming off the heels of uh of of your other dog passing. What? What did he what did he pass up? Just old age or No, he had a um he had a tumor that ruptured. It's called hemangiosarcoma. It could be cancerous or it could be malign malignant, but it ruptured. My daughter told me she was like, Bear made this noise and then he lay down on the ground and didn't he won't get up. I'm like, take him to the animal hospital right now, take him. Right. So they took him and after he died, like they took him and they were like um, checking his pupils and his gums. A telltale sign when a dog is internally bleeding is their gums go pale or gray because they're supposed to be pink like salmon. So there was like his gums are gray and his eyes are, his pupils are dilated. So they was like, we're going to do a workup and do x-rays and see what's going on. And then um, my fiance called and was like, they... He stopped breathing. Do you want to do CPR? And I was like, hell yeah, let's do CPR. Yes. And then probably like five minutes later, they said, um, we tried to do another round of CPR, but when we pulled the tube out, there was blood all over it. His heart stopped beating and, you know, we can't, he's passing, he's fast. And so I'm, I'm like, how the fuck, what happened? Like, how, how, did, how? He was fine last night. And then the next day he's dead? Like, what? So I know from just human medical standpoint if you're fine one day and dead the next something had to have ruptured the cause and bleeding right mm -hmm. so i was like something had to have burst or something maybe he had an aneurysm i don't know if dogs get aneurysms but i don't know so i was looking at my security camera because i wasn't at home when this happened i'm looking on my security camera to find out at the time when she said that she heard him make this noise and i listened to the noise and he made a noise like he normally does, like he had an ear infection. So he would scratch his ear and make that noise. But then after he made that noise, he made another noise. It was like a high pitch and then a low moan to where it just got lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until he stopped making the noise. That sounded like he died right there in that minute. So I let a vet hear the video, and she said it sounded like that was the moment when his tumor ruptured and he bled out internally. So nothing can be done about that either. Um, usually it's fatal unless you get surgery, and people who get surgery on that type of stuff are people who have fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to spend on it. And even if you get surgery, the prognosis for the dog surviving is slim. Mm. So well. he, wasn't gonna, he was 10, so most of the time those, those type of tumors happen to dogs in old age. Wow, down. Mm. That one hit me hard, though. That hit me hard. Well, like, I, I I would imagine because it hit that me hard. the 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 first dog was your 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 confidant, your you know, 
your your everything. It's my service animal. Right, right. Yeah. Well, again, man, I'm 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 thankful that uh, you know that you 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 came on to share this story right. of right. of what's going on, but you you had a you you got an issue going on social media right now. I uh, I'm not sure where I saw the video. I think I either saw it on YouTube or on your TikTok. Um, I tried to go back to pull up the video for this conversation. Um, in that particular video, you you was going back and forth with uh with the uh with with some unknown. I, I'm just gonna say unknown person over the internet, and. I was going to do a reaction video to it, but I I said, well, well, maybe right. I should just reach out to her and 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 bring her on the show and just have a conversation about it. So I'm glad you accepted. So again, I I I sent you you know a behind the scenes message because we know each other on you uh, on Facebook, yeah. and I said, look, um, why why are you going back and forth with this person? this unknown person over the internet is just making you look bad. And, uh, and of course I said, in my opinion, but I, I didn't know how you was going to, how you was going to take that, you know, because you know, me and you have, <laughs> me and you have overly different opinions about certain things. And, you know, I, you know, I don't, you, you know me, I don't, you know, I still like you regardless of, how you know we go back and forth but um again you you going back and forth in my opinion with somebody that you don't even know over the internet why let this person uh get to you what's what's going on judgmental see you're judgmental i didn't deny him nothing if i don't have the money right away to get that blood transfusion what am i supposed to do I did what the vet told me to do. Feed him beef liver, give him nutrients, leafy green vegetables, build up his iron, iron supplements, build up his hemoglobin so that he can build up his blood count to buy me some time so I could save some money to get the transfusion. I took a loan out on my 401k to get this transfusion for him. It takes time. It's not like it just gets direct deposited in my checking account. So before you fix your lips to judge somebody, like I said, get the context. You sit up here saying that I denied him treatment. I didn't deny him nothing. So you need to get that right. Again, watch what you say. Um, well, she, she is a part of a rescue organization. Um, when I was going through all the stuff with Blaze and all his medical stuff, the people who you can get the best advice from beside a vet is a rescue organization because they're the people who rescue dogs from animal shelters that are sick and they re rehabilitate them and then they adopt them out to people who are looking for dogs. So they are continuously bringing in dogs, fixing them up, making them healthy, and, and then adopting them out. So I asked for advice with, on her channel about, you know, Blaze's condition and what do she think that I should do. And aside from the already, un, the already known obvious thing that I need to do, like what other uh, options can we look at, you know, just trying to help him. And um, so that's how I got in contact with her. Um, then so when I was on her live, everything was, good or whatever she was telling me go out and you know you got to give him a blood transfusion and if you can't afford it then you need to you know put up a, a venmo and zelle and cash app and go fund me and you know get do donations to pay for it and then turns around when i get off her live talks about how i'm denying the dog treatment how i neglected to give him a blood transfusion how i shouldn't have a dog if i can't afford one and I'm thinking, first of all, that's slander and defamation. Second of all, you're a rescue. And if other rescues who watch your channel believe what you're saying, and I decide to go to that rescue and, and ask, you know, try to adopt a dog, 
they're not going to listen to me. They're not going to want to hear me. They do really thorough, you know, applications. They ask you, have you ever had a dog before? Have they died? What happened to them? What does your home look like? What is your backyard? Like they ask you this really long questionnaire of your circumstances to see if you're the right fit for them to let release this dog to you. So I'm thinking if she's talking, telling all these lies about me and I decide I want to go try to rescue a dog, I mean, not rescue, but adopt a dog from a rescue, which is what I prefer, they're going to do research. They're going to do what they always do. And they're going to hear what she's saying. They're not going to listen to me. They're going to say, they're going to say, well, she had a dog that she can't afford. Number one, she can't afford medical treatment for a dog. And then they're going to say, and then she declined to give the dog the medical treatment. The doctors kept telling her to give it to her, give it to the dog, and she didn't do it. So I'm a big thing about if you want to say something on the Internet, speak the facts, speak the truth. Don't speak on what you think happens. Know all the context behind it before you open your mouth. So I have to respond to her. And normally I don't like responding to people because I, I get so much hate. I mean, I, it's exhausting if I have to respond to all of that. So I don't normally. But with her, I'm like, you know, you need to get your facts straight. And that's not the case. First of all, medically speaking, he can't get a blood transfusion until the hookworms are gone. So you're saying I denied him the blood transfusion when, in fact, he couldn't get one. Even if I didn't have the, had the money or not, he couldn't get one. Right. The reason why I came to your page was to get advice on how to keep him. What can I do to increase his blood platelet levels until Monday morning when I got the money to do the blood transfusion? Granted that the hookworms are gone. She took all that and ran with it. So I have to reply to her because I have to defend myself. I don't want, you can go to jail for neglecting a dog. People like they have pet police or something like that. I don't remember what it's called, but if somebody was to believe her and they looked at just what she said and nothing of what I thought did, they'll say, who is this person? And then they'll come after me for neglecting to give that dog medical treatment. I can get written up, get a fine or a ticket. So I had to defend myself, number one, because I don't want to have any type of legal actions taken against me. Number two, because I want to adopt from a rescue eventually, and I don't need her opinion to persuade somebody not to adopt to me, uh, to me because of her lies. And number three, I'm defending me as a person. I'm not the type of person that will neglect the dog and let the dog die. So I felt like that was a situation where I had to respond and defend myself. Okay. okay. There you have it. There you have it. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, you, you, you reach out to people for advice and for help only to get, you know, only to get, uh, to get slapped in the face, you know, I guess um, <laughs> she made me feel belittled on her channel. She made me feel like you don't know anything. I know everything. This is what I think you should do. This is what you're going to do. And if you don't do it, then you're neglectful. That that was just how I felt. She was yelling at I called a, a, a ER doc um, at the place where they will do the blood transfusion. First of all, just to give you a note. The blood transfusion place that I called when I was on a line with her, they quoted $1,000 for a blood transfusion. Jeez. She yelled at that doctor. She was rude as fuck to that doctor, right? The, blood, the place where I took him to get the blood transfusion, it was only $350. Okay. So Still a lot of they money, just give but... you a scope on. Right. So, But she was just really rude and yelling at the doctor. No, I didn't say that. I said what would need, be needed to get the dog to transfusion. Like, I don't remember what she said, but it was so rude. And she seems like a Karen to me. <laughs> she seems like a Karen. So, I mean, you, uh, do, do, I felt, I felt that way. I felt do, like I would be little. Do they have, um, when you get, when you get animals, you know, I, I know as far as a human goes, you know, we, 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 we get life insurance, we get health insurance, you know, we get we get we get the things that we need and not in life to make sure that you know we're okay, especially in 
in times of financial peril, do they offer, uh, like when you go to the rescue or anything like that, do they offer any type of animal insurance, animal health insurance? No, the rescues, the rescues don't um, offer animal insurance. They have it. I didn't know anything about pet insurance until I started. Like when I got him, when I first got him, I got him on this thing called Care Club through VCA, and that's where you all of his doctor's appointments are free. His immunizations are free. His deworming is free. Any type of um, preventative care is free, right? I paid $65 a month for that, so I got that for him. Then when he started getting sick and I realized I can't take him to the animal hospitals around the country, it can only be the one in Houston for free, then I started looking into animal insurance. However, because he's already sick, that's a pre-existing condition. They don't cover pre-existing conditions. Right. So me getting animal insurance for him would have been just, you know, null and void at that point. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have helped me or helped him. It's crazy. they do have it. It, It's crazy, you know. But if you go to a breeder, though, Mm -hmm. you go to a reputable breeder, the breeder should be, um, ideally, you want the breeder to have a, a relationship with the American Kennel Club. AKC, yeah, American Kennel Club, and they have a classified, you know, section where breeders can list their dogs on there, and a good breeder will give you a certificate of health saying that the dog is healthy, the parents are healthy, they don't have any of the genetic conditions that will come with that particular breed. They usually can get a health guarantee saying, um, I guarantee the dog is going to be healthy for this amount of time, maybe two years. If not, we'll cover it, stuff like that. But when you go through a rescue or adopt from, like, an animal shelter, you, you're not going to get that it's basically as is. Like, if you were to buy a car as is, you know, you deal with it. They try to do the best they can, but they don't know the background, where the dog came from, the pets, I mean, the parents' genetics and stuff like that. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Well, dial face. Again, uh, my condolences goes out to you. Um, I, I know this this hit hard. You know your 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 beloved uh, pet, your first one, and then the one that you rescued. Unfortunately, uh, his life came to a an abrupt end as well. Uh, again, my condolences goes out to you. I hope uh, I hope. Um, you know, you're you're strong enough to, you know, probably rescue another dog and hopefully that dog will be, you know, healthy. And I'm that not dog going to w- another rescue. Not with a German Shepherd. I'm going to go to a breeder. I already found a breeder, found the dog, and I get all the paperwork and then some with that dog. So okay, that's I'm going to get another dog soon. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Big G's got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night? Yeah, take me down.